welcome friends to this afternoon session of the second day of our three day event for the bandara of great master azur maharaj baba sawan singh my master i'm very happy that you came and joined me there is nothing greater than initiation by a perfect living master the only guaranteed escape from our continuous birth and rebirth in this physical world and that is why in a way it's a very small thing very small request the master makes can you do this small thing and i'll give you a big deal in, in turn for that and if we say oh it's very difficult then we don't know what we are getting we have no idea about the deal i heard when i was in india that there is a big question of taste people are got getting used to the taste of meat it has a particular flavor vegetable don't have it has a particular fiber vegetable don't have there's something in it i said let me work on some substitute for it as it happened by coincidence i got a fellowship from united nations united nations children's fund to see if we can make high protein meat substitute out of soy beans a large surplus of that exists in the united states so the fellowship given to me and a colleague of mine who was a expert in nutrition and we both traveled around the world and we came to united states and i saw the big bean bowls this is in the 70s till that time the plant soy bean was being used only for extracting soy oil and the rest was animal feed this was a challenge given to me and my partner to make the animal feed into human food can it be done we succeeded in doing it we found that we can texturize it to the same level as meat we can put flavors the same as meat has so people who are so accustomed to taste meat that they cannot have a substitute will have something substitute later on they'll find it's a very minor thing to turn vegetarian it's not such a big deal when you're getting initiation with that i worked on that a few friends of mine they said would you like to come and work on a meat substitute in the united states i said i got training I know how to do it. I worked at two universities in India, and we have started growing soybean plant in India in a big way to make the meat substitute even for India. I certainly come. I retired from my job, and I came and joined them to make meat substitute based on the knowledge I had gained, and I visited a large number of companies who were making oil and feed from soybean. in this country three or four locations i visited and spent time with them eventually we were able to make something very similar to meat and we tested with people who were meat eaters and many of them could not even distinguish which one was meat which was a substitute i said at least those who are so addicted to it at least have a vegetarian substitute for it now and therefore if you cannot give up meat because of its taste because you have got used to it or because you think it doesn't the the uh, alternative doesn't have the nutrition we have the alternative and since i left that company my partner and his son who worked with me on this project are still making it and they call it similarly supposing I just want to give you an example. Supposing Great Master said to me, "Eat meat," I would have eaten meat. It's not really the food that is making spirituality. It's just a suggestion by the master, very small suggestion, to see how you value your initiation. So it's a very minor thing to just change over. And now that we have this meat substitute, it becomes e easier. It's not a big deal. because i am surprised that some people say we can't give up meat and we rather miss out in initiation so that's why i brought this point up and introduce you to these people 
initiation is an acceptance by the master that you are on that list to go back home with that master. If you are ready and follow the instructions of the master to the best of your ability, you will go back definitely in this very life. If for some reason you do not follow the instructions, you may have to come again. There is a saying by Sesh Shivjal Singh Swamiji from Agra. He says, four lives are needed on the spiritual path. And I will give you the Hindi version of this and translate it for you. Ek janam gur bhakti, janam dusare naam, janam tisare turiyapad. Chothe me nijdham. What it means is one whole life you have to de devote to getting your devotion for your master. Second life you have to come to get initiated by that by a perfect master. Third life you can go up to the top of the causal region in your meditation, in your experience. In the fourth life you can go to your true home. <laughs> He mentioned that, so some people ask me, is it all necessary to be in four lives? Not necessary. Is, is it described that these are the normal pattern? It takes several lifetimes. It's not a small thing. To go to your true home is not a small thing. Some people meet me and say, do I have to come three more lives? I said, maybe you already passed those three lives. How do you know which life you're on? This could be your last life. But I'll tell you a true story of my father. He was a disciple of great master. One day he heard, he was not present in the discourse, but he heard from others. Great master said that if you are once initiated by a perfect living master, you will not come for more than three lives, total four. In the evening, there was a private party, private meeting, and he was there, I was there. And he said to master, master, is it true? That in the morning, in your discourse, you said that once you're initiated, you cannot come for more than four lives. The great master said, Lake Raj, that was my, his, my father's name. Lake Raj, why are you asking this question? This is your last life. And my dad said, I'm asking questions, supposing I want to have the fifth life. Is there a barrier to that? He said, why would you like a fifth life? He said, because I understand sometimes masters return. And if you are going to return from the true home back after four lives, I am not going to stay back. I want to come back for the fifth life. And great master laughed and then he explained. He said, four lives is the limit. If you are initiated by your perfect living master and you follow his instructions to the best of your ability, you'll never be able to follow completely. The mind will stop you. Mind will come in the way. But if, in spite of that, you do your very best to follow those instructions, this is the only life that you'll be here and you'll be out of it the next time. So you don't have, don't have a second life. If you do not follow the instructions and move away from it, you may have to have one more life, in which case you will follow the instructions automatically because of the experience of one life. If you completely run away from the master, say, oh, I don't believe in anything. I just uh, messed up my life and by going to this master and even go against the master, you may have to come for another life. The fourth life is for those who not only criticize the master, they crucify the master, kill the master. He'll, they'll have to come for fourth life. So he explained it's not normal to have four lives that most of the people who try to follow instructions go back to the very first life and i am telling you this story because i am saying do not miss this please if you are initiated by a perfect way master do your best to follow the instructions and don't have to come back again unless you want to that's a different matter some people want to also so i know that some people who were very close to get master came back again because for some reason they wanted to see his prophecy working in the United States. 
That's a different matter. There are a few exceptions like that. But otherwise, if you follow the instructions as best as you can, and look, there's a loophole there also, as best as you can. Masters know that you cannot do exactly everything they say. The mind comes in the way and fights it, fights with you. So with the best you can do, that you will be able to get the most benefit from a master's initiation and go back home as fast as you can. Also, the another thing, we have a lot of desires and attachments in this world. We build them over time, over le several lifetimes. We love certain things. We are very attracted to certain things. And we want to go after those things. And then we get attached to those things. And if we don't get them, we get disappointed. So those expectations and disappointment are part of human life. They don't go away easily. As I said in the very first day, that you have to have an intense love for something else to be detached from what you're already attached to. So that is why that takes time to build up that kind of intense love for your master that you don't want anything else except love for the master. It takes time. So meanwhile, what do you do? You, you have to work towards this. And the best thing to do is to continuously meditate regularly, no matter how little the meditation is, and think of the master all the time. Some people say, we are very busy, our lives are very busy, our obligations are too many, and we only meditate on weekends. And I told them very clearly, honestly, weekend meditation means starting from square one again and again. Because you don't maintain the momentum. If you meditate every day in the morning, even five minutes, or 10 or 20, whatever you can do, but at least five minutes if you can meditate, remembering the master, having conversation with him in meditation in your head with the master. Every day, a momentum is built up and you'll see the results of it. So to make meditation effective, you should not cause any interruption in it. Do it every day in the morning and it will help you definitely. I am just sharing some tips that I learned from my own experiences, that these things make a difference. The food you eat makes a difference. The way you treat other people, supposing you are very angry and then you want to meditate, you can't meditate properly. And some people are meditating and there's a man told me, I meditate, but my wife comes and interrupts me. So I said, what do you do then? I shout at her. How dare you stop me? I'm meditating. I said, after that, do you still meditate? I try, but it's not the same. Naturally. It's not only food. It's not only the way we live. It's so many things that come in the way that facilitate good meditation, effective meditation. The more calm and at peace you are, the better meditation it will be. Sometimes some people have said, you need stillness of the mind to be able to meditate properly. Nobody can still the mind. Nobody has ever done it. The mind is an automatic machine, thinking machine. It cannot be stopped. So that is why we can only be still by ignoring the mind and being comfortable in our own zone. Third eye center, sitting quietly, enjoying, smiling, looking at things as they appear, not moving anywhere. We are very peaceful and calm. Then meditation is good. Meditation should be done at the third eye center. Nowhere else. We don't do that. We do meditation on chairs, on the ground, on special mats, special corner of our house, which we are earmarked for meditation. If you meditate on a special chair, you are meditating on the chair. How can you get out of it? It's my very special chair. I go to my friend's houses. They say, we have got a special room and a special chair for meditation only. I say, let me go and sit in it also. I go and sit in the chair. I say, beautiful, wonderful chair. I can sit two and a half hours thinking about this chair. <laughs> you can't help it. The whole intention of effective meditation is to withdraw your attention to third eye center. 
Look at the power of imagination. You can create any chair you like. You can create any cushion you like. You can create any mat you like, any carpet you like, right in the third eye center. Make it there and meditate there. It'll work. Outside, we have a special room for meditation. We have special place for meditation. No, there's only one place, good place for meditation, right behind your eyes, on the top of your head, in your body. No matter where you are, you're carrying your meditation chamber with you all the time. So that is why meditation should be done right at the third eye center, where you already are. Another thing that you don't have to search for the place. Here you have to search for a place to find a chair to go to a room. They don't have to search. You are there already. You just have to pull your attention up. When I got initiated, I was very young. So I told great master after a little while that it's very hard to meditate because I can't find out the place where I have to sit. You say third eye center. I know it's in the head, but how do I go there? He gave me, a, he sim did a simple trick. He said, you have this body. Can you lift it up in imagination? That's a little higher than this, this body. I said, I said, I can imagine, especially if I close my eyes, it's easier to imagine I am up higher than there. I'm just imagining this chair has gone low and I am here. I am up here. He said, all right, now raise your finger like this, the index finger up. I raise my finger. He said, raise it so high that you can't see it. I said, I can't see it. It's above my head. Can you imagine that you, this body has risen with the same imagination all the way to the top of your finger? And I tried. Yes, if I'm here, I am there. Imagination. I can imagine. I told him, I can imagine I'm there. I'm still sitting up on the top of the finger. Yes, I am. Bring it down slowly. Are you still there? Are you still there? Yes, I am. Still there? Bring it in front. Are you still there? Yes. Jump in. I jumped in. Third eye sent. <laughs> Simple trick. The main thing that the mistake I was making was in trying to find third eye center, I was closing my eyes and trying to imagine I am little fellow sitting there. That was not me. That was my imagination, separate from me. It was not me. It has to be yourself. You feel you are there. Not that you are making a picture of yourself. You are there and not here. You, are, you have lifted yourself up and gone there. That's the imaginative part. This is so important. That just by missing this part, people go on looking at their own made-up image, which is not even inside. I've explained many times that when you make an image with your eyes closed and the darkness is in front of you, it does not mean that you have gone inside anywhere. You're just not seeing outside because you close your eyes. And any images you try to make are still outside of your eyes. You're trying to see with these eyes. Eyes are closed, so you try to imagine things outside. When you close your eyes and feel, there I am sitting at the third eye center. I give an experiment. Right now, we are all in a wakeful physical state. We know where our eyes are. We don't have to search for them. We can close our eyes, still know where they are. I close my eyes, I can touch them with my hand. I know exactly where they are. All right. Now close your eyes and make that image which you are seeing as yourself sitting at third eye center. Then bring your hands very slowly towards your eyes. Very slowly. And as you will be close to the eyes, you will just pass that image that you created. It was outside all the time. You can check it out. We don't make images like that inside. They are all still outside. We think they are inside because our eyes are closed. It's dark. You cannot create an image and feel that you are at the third eye center. You have to be at the third eye center, not an image. That means you have to lift yourself. They think that the whole body of yours has gone up into this area and sitting there. You are already there. The space is known. It's the, it's the attention that has to be picked up and brought there. And your meditation will be effective. Actually, the, this first part, to locate yourself, that third eye center is the most difficult part. 
the rest are much easier to go to the inner body first part is the most difficult and we get caught up in that and we waste years and years of meditation without seeing anything but if you can locate yourself there that you are nowhere else except there that helps a lot you start with that i'm just giving you a few tips learned from long long experience i am very happy i could join you for this bandara tomorrow we'll be celebrating great master bandara the day of abundance abundance of grace so much grace falls i can share a personal experience with you with his permission of course i normally don't share my spiritual experience with you unless he permits but this is a permission given special for this day that when bandara comes i not only see him check and see him all the time i see him blessing every person who attends the bandara with me it's very it's a very emotional moment for me to see how much blessing he can give to those who just happen to come and attend bandara with me i am expecting that kind of grace and showering of abundance of grace tomorrow thank you very much for joining me and i'll see you tomorrow 11 o'clock